Hey there, I'm further reading. Today we're going to talk about making automatic garbage disposal using Atmos Smashes or Magma. I'm going to go over now how to make this from scratch. First of all, what you want to do is create a refuse stockpile. Place it next to a pit that will go down either to some Magma or to an Atom Smasher, whichever you prefer. Then we're going to select custom with setting up our refuse pile. We're going to hit refuse. We're going to hit all first, make sure everything's selected. But then I am going to change it so that we don't put in any hair wool, shells, bones, or skulls. The reason why I've done it like this is because skulls, bones, and shells can all be used in crafting. And hair wool is used for making yarn. All right, if you don't want to craft with these, feel free to enable them. The next step now is we are going to make a minecart stop. Uh, this is kind of similar to how we build a quantum stockpile. So we're going to make a track stop. We're going to make sure that it is dumping to the north and plop it right here. Make it out of whatever you want. And then we wait for a dwarf to make it. Now that this has been made, we are going to add a hauling root for it. So we're going to add a new route. We are going to click on the stop. We are going to give it some sort of minecart. We are going to set the minecart up to haul the same stuff that's in the refuse pile. So that is going to be everything except skulls, bones, shells, hair and wool. Then we are going to tell it to take its items from the refuse stockpile. And then we are going to get rid of all of the criteria. So what this means now is once this is built and the minecart is on it, then as soon as an item gets added to the minecart, it'll get dumped to the north. So it'll get dumped down here into the lava and start burning. In addition, I like putting a garbage dump next to it as well. We'll pop it right here. What a garbage dump does is it tells the dwarf where to stand when I give the order to dump an item. So if I was to say, tell them to dump this item, they're going to take it over to this square and drop down the hole. That way stuff's going to get burnt in the lava if it's automatically put in via the refuse stockpile or if it's manually designated to be destroyed using the dump designation. Over here, I've got a similar setup, but this one uses an Atom Smasher instead. This can be a good option if you don't have easy access to magma. This is a more exploity version though. So if you want to try to avoid using mechanics that shouldn't really exist, then maybe you want to stick with the lava method. This exploit relies on the fact that when a bridge is moved up or down, it will delete any items that are in its path. How this works is at the end of the pit, rather than lava, we've built a bridge that's being connected to a couple of pressure plates. And I've got a door here that's locked. The reason why I've got the door locked is as dwarves take stuff in the refuse stockpile and dump it down here via the minecart, it'll be unlocked when it lands. So a dwarf will notice that there's an unlocked item that's not in the stockpile. I might try to get it. And if they come through the door, they might end up killing themselves as the bridge is moving. To make sure the bridge moves automatically without me having to pull any levers, I've connected it to some pressure plates. Uh, this, part, this refuse stockpile has two entrances, one from this northern side here and another down here through this area. So what I've done is I've put a pressure plate on both of these entrances and I've linked the pressure plate to the bridge down here. So what happens is as my dwarves come in here to either put stuff directly into the refuse stockpile or because again I've, I've made a dumping zone here as well they're going to be dumping it down the hole either way they're going to pass over a pressure plate which is going to cause the bridge to move and it's going to end up destroying the items on the same square as the bridge and that way it'll be completely auto automatically running as for some tips to avoid some pitfalls with using this mechanic you'll notice that both for this magma shoot and also for this atom smasher that I have it down a couple of Z levels. Uh, this is because in the case of the Atmos Smasher, when the bridge is opening, it can sometimes launch items upwards. And for the magma, when stuff starts to burn, it'll make smoke. You can see some smoke here. The item getting launched up can damage your dwarves, while the smoke can irritate them. So adding a couple of extra Z levels will help prevent that from happening. In addition, when a dwarf is moving something into the refuse stockpile, they're using the refuse hauling labor. When they put it into the minecart, it's a store item and vehicle task. And I'm, I'm not 100% of this, but I think that this is a lower priority than hauling stuff into the refuse stockpile. 
This means that sometimes you get stuff rotting and creating miasma in the refuse stockpile before it gets moved into the pit. One way to handle this if you're close to the surface is if you see it go one above, I've got this flooring above my area. What I've done here is I've channeled out the area to create an opening and then I covered it with floors. And this means that now this is illuminated and because it's illuminated, anything that's rotting in this area will not be creating miasma. Obviously, this is more difficult to do down in my magma example. So if you notice that you're having these issues, then maybe you might consider having rotten stuff stored closer to the surface. That being said, I've noticed that the dump task is a pretty high priority. So you can also just manually mark rotting stuff to get dumped if it looks like your dwarves aren't hauling it fast enough. So yeah, that is how you set up a automatic garbage disposal and also some tips to make sure it's running effectively. I hope you found this guide useful and if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you want any more content like this, you can check out any of the videos on screen right now. Or you can find me on Twitch where I stream Dwarf Fortress pretty regularly. Hopefully, I'll see you soon.